Maybe. Maybe. Implies that because you're not attracted to trans people, or at least trans people you recognize thusly, then therefore they must be less of the gender they identify as because otherwise you'd want to fuck them. Hey, do you want to fuck your parents? No? Are your parents the gender they identify with? The logic of this is flimsy because it's meant to work on a surface level reading that gets people emotional. Check the comments. Wait, let's process this. Right. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, you keep pausing it. I'm. I'm honestly having trouble keeping up. It's like such because he makes logic. so many different arguments so quickly that are all not connected or really founded together, and he doesn't realize it. We're okay. gonna need paper and pencil for this one. Yes. I have a feeling. Yeah. Okay. So he's saying he's saying it's okay not to be attracted to your parents obvious for obvious reasons but that you wouldn't conceptualize that as a sexual preference okay right but the right. thing is obviously because generally people only have a handful of parents so like but he's it's not, making the he's making the argument not, that not being attracted to something is not a sexual preference yeah but that's well that's true this is not mm -hmm. an this is not a good comparison Okay. But this is the same conflation that we pointed out in the very beginning of the video right. because it's it's about attraction. It's not about not attraction. He's only making it right. about not attraction so that he can say you're a, a horrible transphobic bigot because you're not attracted to trans people instead of just saying, hey, I'm attracted to cis people. Right, right. Yeah. No, that's true. But I'm just saying it doesn't make sense. This is his parents' argument. It's like... Mm -hmm. it's your your parent i mean I, it's technically a category of people but you don't what need like parent, a what if you know you don't need like a trans. widespread i'm saying you don't need a widespread category for the for your parents because generally there's like two people one person right. maybe three or four if you have step parents or something like it's it's not like a huge you don't have like a giant range of like class of people you define as your parents that you have to categorize in your mind the way you do for like heterosexuality homosexuality et cetera, et cetera. I'm just throwing this out there, okay? But you have this stepmom that is trans, <laughs> okay? That is trans? Yeah. Okay. And and you're not attracted to your trans stepmom. Does that right. make you a transphobe? <laughs> I'm just, I, I'm just, I just, I have to know. Well, well Thoughtsline would say that depends. If she wasn't trans, would you be attracted to her? Well, it's more about the stepmom thing. I mean, your dad. Right. Well, then he would say banger. no. Then he yeah. would say no. That it's not. Okay, that's okay. That's okay. Okay. Good. I just I want to make sure. I, I want to make sure I don't get in trouble here. Section and tons of people asserting the general premise of super heterosexuality in the comments, as though that definition negates every argument I've made in this video. You're not meant to think too hard about it because it's meant to just affirm your gut instinct that trans people are icky and just lying about being whatever gender they present as. Well, not your gut instinct. Nothing Thought Slime has presented in this video is uh, built around appealing to your emotions or gut instincts whatsoever. No, no, it's, it's all appeal. What? It's, <laughs> it's all, all appealing. And reason and logic and big brain things. No, yep. no, 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 no. It's all built on shame. That's right. He's basically That's right. trying to shame his audience into That's true. Into Speaking expanding of... the dating pool for his trans right. friends, I guess. I don't know. Speaking of shame, I'll be right back. Mm. <laughs> what? I have to watch this all by myself. Instinct, but the gut instincts of people who are both bigoted enough to believe that and also too cowardly to say so directly. It's a way to say that you don't believe trans people are who they say they are and disguise that bigotry through the language of sexual autonomy. To pretend that these two things are at odds. Through the language of sexual autonomy. I'm not sure I even understand what he means by that. I thought sexual autonomy was good. I thought we were a consensual society and we wanted everyone to have sexual autonomy. That's where these arguments kind of get a little slippery because you start butting up against the consent argument when you say, listen, you know, I'm going to shame you into finding something you don't find attractive, attractive. And this is, this is basically why I am saying I mean, this is this is borderline conversion therapy here. If someone is not attracted to trans people and you are going to attempt to make a video that could easily appear in some 
program aimed at converting somebody from the uh, type of person that they're attracted to into something, into being attracted to something they're not attracted to. How is that not conversion therapy? That's exactly what conversion therapy is designed to do. Conversion therapy used to famously be used on gay people to make them straight. So if a gay person was attracted to the same sex, they would try to make them attracted to the sex that they're not attracted to. And I, I believe, you know, if you were an instructor in one of these abhorrent classes, they mm -hmm. probably had, you know, attractive women or something that they were trying to attract you. I mean, they probably know more about this stuff than Thought Slime does. How is this whole video not a, con a, a video that's like for conversion therapy? It, it is. could be That's exactly shown in a conversion is. therapy class. Yes. This is a conversion therapy video. Yeah. That's cr I'm crazy. Sh I'm shaming you for your sexual. It's yes. He's going to, he'll get around it. Cause technically what he's doing is he's shaming people for their sexual preference, but he's going to get around it by saying, well, I'm defining the thing you don't like as not sexual preference. Therefore you can't say that this is a conversion video. That's the trick that he's employing here. But because the conservative Christians who do their conversion therapy programs use the same kind of shaming tactic. I agree. They also God is the completely against you being attracted to the same sex. God wants right. you to be heterosexual. Like all that stuff is right. And and they also make the same argument because they redefine the term sexual preference to say, oh, that's all nonsense. Everyone has, of course, everyone has a choice. Blah blah blah. So yes, they, so you're... that's yeah. They want to say that it's a choice. Sexual right. attraction is a choice. So it is funny because you're completely right. Thought Slime is doing the exact same thing the ultra Christian uh, conversion people are doing, just in the opposite direction. theory is real. Yeah. The, the, <laughs> there you go. I finally He's got Adam he, to admit horseshoe theory. He is literally theory. he has literally made a conversion therapy video. Yes. Yes. And this is on YouTube. <laughs> the 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 ultra Christians are saying your sexual preference is a choice, and therefore you should choose to be straight. And Thought Slime is saying, you not wanting to be with a trans man or a trans woman is a choice, and therefore you should be with them. Yeah. Uh, it's so funny. It's so ridiculous. It's not funny. It's, it, it's. I think it's hilarious. Well, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say mm -hmm. Thought Slime is against conversion therapy. Right. I would imagine. Like, well, he's not. He's, he's promoting therapy. it right here. He's just in favor of conversion therapy in the direction that he wants. That's nuts. <laughs> of course <laughs> it's nuts. That's this all this is, woke shit. It's all, all like this. So much. I don't know if you know anything about the like the gay rights movement history or anything, but a lot of this stuff. Adam, I was heavily involved in the gay rights movement okay, even before right. I was born in the 80s. OK, so how dare you? Oh, really? Yes. I was as a pre fetus. For, I, was I was the campaign manager for Harvey Milk. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, obviously not. But the one of the 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 Christians had this uh, gay is a choice argument that pretty much the entire society bought into, and the gay community had to fight hard for the society wide adoption of the fact that uh, your sexual orientation is an immutable characteristic yes they fought for people to believe that yes now that it's widely accepted that uh you know your sexual orientation is a, an immutable characteristic you got thought slime here coming along saying <laughs> no actually that's incorrect we were wrong all those things that we fought for that the gay community fought for society to 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 accept so that they wouldn't have to live their lives in the closet uh, no, that's all the Christians had it right all along. Sorry, guys. Uh, it's sexual, pro sexual orientation is actually a choice. And you make that choice every time you decide that you're not attracted to a trans person or someone of the same sex as you. But this well, is fucking crazy pill land here. Well, and he would probably say that you're straw manning him because. Okay. He's not saying that. He is essentially saying what you're saying. But what he's doing is he's cloaking it in, in redefining or just defining how he chooses sexual orientation to not include, you know, not being attracted to trans people. Mm -hmm. 
So he's he's basically saying as a sexual orientation that a trans person is indistinguishable from the category that you are already attracted to. Yes. That's what and he's saying. Therefore, you making the distinction is your is not an orientation, but maybe that's why he's using the word preference. He's saying that is oh, why that's he's using a it. preference. He's because he's saying well, he's making two arguments, which is weird. The first argument mm -hmm. is that he's saying sexual orientation is not a choice, but mm -hmm. not wanting, but not but being sexually attracted sexual... to trans people is a choice, right. which is strange. So that's, so that's a sexual preference. Well, it's not, sexual, let's, it's people not use an the orientation. Term, people use the term sexual preference orientation interchangeably, so let's not create a distinction there. No, but, but I'm but, making the distinction because yeah, they, but, well, they, they going to make the, the conversation way too confusing okay. in the future. But... Um, that, so that's the first argument he's making. The second argument he's making is that, well, even if hypothetically sexual orientation is a choice, it would still be okay for people to be gay and pans, but it still wouldn't be okay for people <laughs> to not want to, to be with trans people. Mm -hmm. So that's when he gets into the real crazy territory because that's when he is entering the Christian fundamentalist uh, attitude. Right. Because it's one thing. Well, and it's an untenable argument because again, what harm, how you define harm is entirely up to the individual and society, right? Because sure. if we're the Christian, if you're the ultra Christian, you're defining harm as your immortal soul going to hell for all eternity, which mm -hmm. if that's true, that's a pretty big fucking harm, right? Right. <laughs> like, so, uh, you know, it's, it's foolish that he's even bothering to make the second argument, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that slime isn't known for making good decisions. Well, it's just so, and one of the reasons these videos are interesting is because it's just so much motivated reasoning. It's like, I yes. got to get to here. Like uh, he's got his tick boxes out. He's like, I got to make conservatives seem like bigots, you know, <laughs> homosexuality and, and pansexuality and all these things have to be glorified. Like he's got mm -hmm. his long checklist here of things, you know have to help trans rights of course so so yeah. the argument isn't just a natural argument this argument is like major you know reach you know gut pull well, how can i put this together in a way that really makes the point right well i mean yeah. of course that's what's so ludicrous about him you know, he's castigating the evil, emotional bigots who are mm -hmm. anti-trans because of their emotions. And it's like his, his entire thing, as you said, it's all backwards yeah. reasoning. It's all post hoc reasoning. Different emotions. The whole thing. Yeah. Shame instead of disgust. But right. Same kind of motivation. Right. I mean, do you think, does anyone honestly think that Thought Slime was sitting down and had a, had no opinion, had a neutral opinion, okay, on whether people should be, whether everyone should be attracted to to trans women or trans men as a class mm -hmm. or, or as a, as a group. And he just had no opinion on this whatsoever and then worked it through very logically saying, well, let me think about the nature of the definition of sexual orientation and then worked it up step-by-step step to get to the, to the decision that he has right now. Does Hell anyone no. think that that happened? Hell no. Of course not. Not in a million years. Not. No.